Welcome back to The Daily Poem here on the Close Reads Podcast Network. I'm David Kirby. Today's poem is by Edna St. Vincent Millay. She lived from 1892 to 1950 and was an American poet and playwright. She received the Pulitzer Prize for Poetry in 1923 and was actually the third woman to ever win that award. Famously, uh, her Wikipedia page even includes this actually, famously Richard Wilbur asserted that she wrote some of the best sonnets of the century. And today I'm going to read one of those sonnets. Its first line is the title of it, as with many sonnets, and that first line is, Euclid alone has looked on beauty bare. This is how it goes. Euclid alone has looked on beauty bare. Let all who prate of beauty hold their peace and lay them prone upon the earth and cease to ponder on themselves the while they stare at nothing intricately drawn nowhere in shapes of shifting lineage. Let geese gabble and hiss, but heroes seek release from dusty bondage into luminous air. O blinding hour, O holy terrible day, when first the shaft into his vision shone of light anatomized, Euclid alone has looked on beauty bare. Fortunate they who, though once only, and then but far away, have heard her massive sandal set on stone. So this is a Petrarchan, a Petrarchan sonnet that was written um, when she was somewhat young, uh, from what I can tell. And it was published in a book called The Harp Weaver and Other Poems. There's a couple things I had to look up in this poem because, for example, I was really wondering um, what was up with the geese gabbling and hissing. This is an illusion that I was not immediately familiar with. So I did a little bit of research. And what I found out was that geese were actually used as watchdogs in, in ancient times, um, I believe for the ancient Greeks. And they would, uh, they would cry out, you know, like, like dogs do, but they would cry out and make loud noises and warn you what was coming. So there's a lot going on in this poem that, that's kind of difficult to unpack. And, and frankly, I wouldn't be able to unpack everything in three or four minutes of description or comments on a seven or eight minute podcast. So I hope you'll take a look at that and, and think about it and, and um, you know, spend some time with it. Listen to the episode a couple of times if, if you need to. But on the surface, it's, you know, it's a poem about beauty as... I guess you might say pure form, like the, the ideal form of beauty. Um, Euclid alone has looked on beauty bare. If you strip everything else away, the idea, the perfect form of beauty, only Euclid has looked at that form is what, uh, is what the poet is saying. And let all who prate of beauty hold their peace. Prate is a word that means to talk foolishly or at tedious length about something. So she's saying, or at least our narrator is saying, Euclid is the only one who has looked at beauty bare, stripped away of everything else, the the ideal form of beauty. Let anyone else who thinks they know what they're talking about hold their peace. All the other contemplations of beauty, whether it's in statues or other art or through the through contemplation of the human form, those don't reach what Euclid is, is was able to to see through mathematics, through geometry, through the study of of these abstract things that he was trying to look at and and incarnate. So he saw something that, that no one else can see, no one else ever saw before, um, and that there's no other kind of artistic contemplation of beauty reaches that, including, presumably, poetry. <laughs> that, that in comparison, that's to stare at nothing. And then strangely, our first eight lines end with the allusion to the gabble and hiss of the geese and the heroes seeking release from dusty bondage into luminous air. So that's the end of our our octave. And then we go into those final six lines. And then in those final six lines, that sestet seems to suggest that not everybody could handle what Euclid saw. That for lesser men, it would be blinding, like, like Moses looking into the fire or something like that. That not, any, not just anybody could, could handle what they're seeing. That it would be terrible to them. And that Euclid alone was able to look on that and, and make sense of it and understand it and, and present it to the rest of the world. And then in the end, in those final lines, it kind of switches and it seems to be saying, well, you know, at least we have the option to see sandaled, personified beauty, even if it's at a distance, even if it's just a mirror, and even if it's a reflection, a shadow, perhaps. At least there's that <laughs> because the other thing would be too terrible. 
it's a complex idea that's going on here. I mean, I think for anyone who is an artist who who contemplates the concept of beauty, I think that this is one of those those sonnets worth contemplating at length. I'm not going to go any further into it because I because I don't have time. Um, but and I think it's better as one of those poems to just kind of ruminate on for a while rather than have somebody tell you exactly what they think on a podcast. So one more time, I'll read it for you. This is Euclid alone has looked on beauty bare. Euclid alone has looked on beauty bare. Let all who prate of beauty hold their peace and lay them prone upon the earth and cease to ponder on themselves the while they stare at nothing, intricately drawn nowhere in shapes of shifting lineage. Let geese gavel and hiss, but heroes seek release from dusty bondage into luminous air. O blinding hour, O holy terrible day, when first the shaft into his vision shone of light anatomized. Euclid alone has looked on beauty bare. Fortunate they who, though only once and then but far away, have heard her massive sandal set on stone. This has been The Daily Poem. Thanks so much for listening. Be back tomorrow with another poem for you.